welcome back to the farm. If you're new here, my name is Nina. I'm a homeschooling, homesteading mom of four, ages eight down to four, and my husband is Daniel. And here on my channel, we talk all about homeschooling, homemaking, and homesteading. Today's video is just gonna be a honest curriculum review of the curriculum that we chose for 2021 school year. Um, so I'm just gonna go kind of subject by subject and talk about the things that we picked in the beginning of the year, tell you if we are still using them, and um, what our reasoning were if we changed, and um, kind of my thoughts and opinions about them. Now just because I may talk, um, not negatively, but just say that something didn't work for our family doesn't mean it may not be a perfect fit for your family. I'm gonna try to lay out like the learning styles and tell you a little bit about my kids um, to give you kind of a better understanding of why something may not have worked for us. Um, so let's dive in. Okay, so we are coming to the end of our 2021 school year. Um, and I just wanted to take a little bit of time, as uh, you may have known, from, if you have watched my March life update, you know that we're moving. So before I take my beautiful schoolroom down and apart and pack it up in a box, I just wanted to run through our curriculum really quick. I know that a lot of people are starting to research for the next school year and decide whether they're going to keep using their curriculum or they're going to change to something different or if you may be brand new to homeschooling and you're kind of like, where do I start? Um, so as I told you in the beginning of the video, my kids are eight, seven, five, and four. So um, our kids are on the younger age range of uh, schooling. Um, so we're doing third grade, second grade, and um, kindergarten, and then my youngest son just started doing some pre-K work. So we started off the year with My Father's World Exploring Countries and Cultures. Now, I don't have that curriculum to show it, show to you because we don't have it anymore. Um, I sold it in December because it was not working for our family. Um, if you're familiar or may not be familiar with My Father's World, is they have something that's called the family cycle. So it's um, you can bring in your kids uh, from second to third grade up to eighth grade and teach them all the same history, science, like art, music. Um, I'm trying to think what else is in there. History, science, art, music, um, read alouds, all of that stuff you do as a family. And then you may branch off and like for your older kids, you may have them write like a page paper. And for the younger ones, you may just have them write a paragraph or a sentence about whatever they were learning about. You can do different activities that involves the entire family. I love that concept, um, but our kids are on the younger age range of the family cycle. So our oldest is in third grade and then we had one. She started the year in first grade, but she's now in second. Um, so it, they were on, I kept having to pull a lot of that stuff out. I kept having to like, I don't want to say dumb down, but I had to like water down a lot of the things that we were using and it was way over their heads. I was losing their attention span. They couldn't sit for the amount of time that it was taking to do some of the lessons. Now we love the read aloud part. We love the book basket aspect of my father's world, but just for this year and this season, it was not a good fit for us. I do see us probably coming back to it in the future once we get kids kind of into upper elementary, going into middle school. Um, like I said, we are, we're about four years. Our kids are four years from top to bottom, four years apart. So if we can just move them up a little bit more over the next couple of years, I think the family cycle will work for us. But it was just going over their heads. So for this year, we decided to can it. And then we went to um, Master Books, uh, My Story 2, My Country and My World. So this is kind of a world geography type curriculum. So it fit kind of along and helped us pick up where we left off in my father's world. This has been great. The lessons are very short. Um, so when you start when you start a lesson, let's see if I can find. So when you start a lesson, 
you're each lesson goes into a different country. Um, and so then you read about that country on day one, and then the rest of the, of the lessons, you are doing activities or different pages about that country, and then you're learning um, different Italian words. And so you're getting some language in there, and then you're, there's journaling pages, and it starts them off really easy in the beginning with like just write a couple of words in the journaling. And by the time that you get into the book, you are writing a, couple, a paragraph or so. But it has lots of pretty pictures, lots of information about the countries that you're going to. And then it tells you different inter interesting facts. So for our third and second grader, this has been really good and right on their level of what they needed. Um, we have a kid that is struggling with having a longer attention span, so this has been great for him. I really like this. Okay, so moving on, and because we did not keep with the science of um, ECC, we, switch, we did switch to master books as well. I tried to pull in, before we switched, I tried to pull in um, Apologia's, I think it was, land animals was it um and that was just a lot it's a very good comprehensive complete science program if you're looking for that but i would say again that's going to be on your older end of range of students um it was over not over my kid's head but the it's so much information that after about five minutes of me reading what i had to read they were done like, uh, they were like, okay, you, I lost you a long time ago. So I, again, was on the search for something that was short, but had experiments and activities that we could do. And Master Books God Design was a, has been a good fit for us. Um, so this is Life for Beginners. It goes through plants for beginners, the human body for beginners, and animals for beginners. So this is Master Books version of Answers in Genesis Science Curriculum. They've taken three of the books and smooshed them together to complete one year's worth of science. And you do science three days a week. Now we don't do it that way. We do it four um, just because we're trying to move through this in this year. So you have a unit um, one, which is Introduction to Life Science. It has Short lessons has some copy work in there. Answer a questions to ask um, to make sure that they are comprehending what you're talking about. There is scripture chase tracing for copy work, and then you have an an activity. There's not an activity on like a outdoor like lab activity on every lesson, but there is some kind of coloring page or activity page for them to do through each lesson. This has been really short. Um, while we've been moving or packing up and getting ready to move, uh, we've changed our school up a little bit. So we just do one subject a day and we've been able to do a couple of lessons in this and the kids not get bored with it. But it does have um, lots of coloring pages and you could add to this if you feel like it was not enough. But for us in this season, it fits really, really well. So for... Um, math, we used Matthew C. Now I've used Matthew C from the very beginning. Matthew C, if you're not familiar with it, is a mastery program. So they wanted you to really master the concepts that they're teaching for that year before you move on to the next year. So for like the first one in alpha, you're working on addition and then they start introducing some subtraction towards the end. And then when you move on to, is it gamma? No. I have to think here. It may be beta. I should know the Greek alphabet. You're doing um, beta. Yes. You're doing more of like adding multiple numbers and then they throw subtraction in there as well. So they want you to get all the concepts of adding and subtracting before they move on to things like multiplication. And then we have gamma, which is just single and multiple digit multiplication. And then there's a year just for um, division. And then you have fractions and decimals and 
I'm trying to remember all the years off the top of my head. But anyway, you co you concentrate solely on that one concept for the entire year. It has been very good. Um, the worksheets, so this is beta. So the worksheets are very plain, which can be very good if you have somebody that gets distracted easily by pictures or color on a page. I really like that. And the lessons are fairly short. The worksheets are fairly short. So they come with a DVD that you can watch and a teacher's manual if you wanna just teach the concept to yourself. And then there are, I think, seven worksheets on that lesson. So we do one lesson a week and then they finish this, the um, worksheets throughout the week at their own pace. And then on Friday, they take their test. Um, and then the main thing that comes with math you see is their blocks. So you do math, the math that you can see. So you have these blocks that you use that go with it. And for a hands-on student, that is works really well. And it has worked really well for our family so far. So um, that is what we use for math. We're still using that and still are liking it. So, moving on to language arts. Now, I started off the year using something that I found off of Teachers Pay Teachers um, from the Moffat Girls. While it was really good, it was more grammar-based, and I wanted something that was a little more well-rounded as far as language curriculum, and it just was, that wasn't working. That was more, it needed to be used more for like a supplement, so we went to uh, Language Lessons for a Living Education by Masterbooks. We're doing three and lesson level two. So third grade and then our second grader is using this. It's been very good uh, for us. Again, the lessons are short. I have to have kids that do not have long attention spans. So I need to get in there, give them the information, let them do the worksheets, and then the next day, when we come back to it, we'll review what we went over the day before. So I'm making sure that they're learning the concepts, but we're not gonna spend an hour on it, if that makes sense, because they're done after that. So this has worked really well. So on the lesson, uh, each week is a lesson. So this is lesson 12. You either have a story to read, a picture, or a picture study, or a poem. Um, that you start the week off with, and then it goes into different grammar and phonics um, concepts that you work on all week. And I love this because everything is based on around the Bible. And then this week, this sheet on level three, you do copy work out of the book. Let's see, I didn't pull it out. It also comes with this book right here so you read this book throughout the year and then it has questions and copy work to go from that so we like that and enjoyed it my son's not crazy about copy work but we work on it together um and then on the last day is when your spelling word worksheet is if i had to say anything about this curriculum that i really did not care for it would be the spelling um but I think we are going to try once we get settled or we're going to try to bring in some activities and like get our spelling words because there are spelling words in the back of the book um, that you can pull out spelling list and we're going to work on those throughout the week um, just so that we can do better better with that but spelling it how it's laid out in here is not my absolute favorite but we love everything else. So that's language, what we use for language. We did also use Explode the Code. I've used Explode the Code from the very beginning. I like this because the reading curriculum that we use is all kind of like auditory based or um, more hands-on with moving uh, letter tiles and that type thing. This is gives phonics in a written form and just helps them to kind of put what they practice on paper. Um, and I have four kids and sometimes I just need somebody to do a little bit of busy work. And I know there's some controversy on how people like busy work, but when I need them to do something that is 
not so much that they've already learned, but I just need them to review. This is where I send them is to explode the code. And so it has helped my kids learn the phonics rules, phonics concepts really well. We do not use this as a, like a standalone curriculum. It is more of a supplement. Um, and they like it. It is a little dry sometimes, but um, like I said, the way that I use it, I think it works really well for us. Um, for handwriting, we use um, a reason for handwriting. I like this curriculum for the sole reason that you are writing out Bible verses. So this is the transition unit that I'm going to show you of transitioning from print to cursive. Um, this is my son's one that he has not gotten to yet, but day one, this is what you do. You practice these words and writing them out in good, good print or good cursive. And then day two is here. And then you move on to the next page. And so by the end of the week, you've written out an entire verse to practice and have copy work. And so you could have your student memorize this first if you wanted them to. If you don't do some form of other memory work, we don't do that. It's just still getting God's word into their hearts. So I like that this curriculum because of this. So for reading, we have used all about reading um, from the very beginning. So this is level three and I have level two here as well. If you're not familiar what this is, this is like a hands-on multi-century program for, for learning to read. So if you have a kid, this is not just for kids that struggle with reading or have dyslexia or dysgraphia. Um, it can work well for all students, but if you have a kid that is struggling with reading or has um, dyslexia or dysgraphia or something like that, this is an excellent program to use. It comes with the teacher's manual, which is what this is. It has um, the activity worksheets, uh, activity pages, and then two or three readers, depending on the level that you are doing. And then it also has word cards where you can practice saying and reading those words. We like um, all about reading very well. Um, into these upper levels, it is starting to get more difficult for my oldest. So we have taken a pause from this and we are solely working on sight words and fluency right now. Um, just because he was getting very frustrated with this, but because he does struggle with reading and we have not had him tested yet, but I'm pretty sure that he would be dyslexic. Just he's, he's got some of the classic signs of it. Um, it was getting very frustrating with him and I didn't want to force it. So we have slowed this down. We will probably finish it next year, but they're not so much grade levels. This doesn't go with a particular grade level. It just goes with the um, capability and uh, of your student and how they are moving through it. So if well, you have a kid that's slower or you have a kid that's faster, it doesn't really matter. Um, how fast or slow that you go through this. They only recommend that you work on this for 20 minutes at a time um, because reading and trying to remember all the phonics rules and putting them together when your stuff may be moving around on the page and all of that stuff can be very exhausting. So we are, we're still going to use this. We're just taking a pause from it and going back and having to just go through some more sight words with him and remember the basics. We have to do that every couple of months. Uh, we'll move forward and then we go back and we kind of work back through what we did just to kind of get him more comfortable and more confident with what he's doing. So the last thing I'm gonna to talk to you about is what we're doing for kindergarten and preschool. So for preschool, we did not start the year off with preschool, but I added it in when my youngest turned four. I do not force my kids to do any sort of preschool or pre-K. I just leave it up to them and what they want to do. Um, he's been asking for schoolwork, so I decided to go ahead and get Master Books Stepping Stones for him for preschool. So here are things that it covers. You have milestone one, you're making observations, shadow play, you're learning your colors, animals, all about me and scissor skills, nutrition, um, concepts about printing, and then you're reviewing colors and animals. 
uh, introduction of letters, and then where's your food come from, textures, starting to count, uh, basic shapes, observing the weather, shadows, following directions, and notice, noticing the difference between things, physical play or physical activity, letters again, story comprehension, opposites, and uh, following directions, emotions, and then some pre-writing skills, um, reviewing shapes, reviewing physical activity and textures, you're reviewing the weather, reviewing food, and reviewing emotions and directions and comprehension. So this program um, is just kind of getting their feet wet into what school is all about and just do, doing a more of develop, following like their developmental skills. Um, so you make a connection with them about something. Uh, this one's like, have, do you remember of like what happens in the sky during the day? What about at night? You, do, what do you know what those things are? The moon is in the sky, the night, the sun is in the sky in the day. Um, and then we talk about a Bible hero. Um, and then you have a short verse for them to memorize. And then on this day, they were doing uh, matching. So we were matching the planet, matching the sun, matching the moon. Um, and then learning to hold a pencil or a crayon. Um, some of this is really easy for him because he's the fourth kid. He's been with us during school um, and watched us and has picked up on stuff. He can count, he knows his colors, he can say all the ABCs. Um, so, but I wanted to do something that was just getting him in the act of kind of sitting down with me if he wanted to do it sitting down with me for like 10 minutes and let's go through this. And that's all that I had a goal for for him. Um, and we'll work on other things as far as putting recognition of letters and sounds together further down once we get through this book. So this book has where you are only doing a lesson three times a week. For him, we're going to do it every day. Um, so we will go through this book we, a lot faster than what you would normally do, but it just says to do three days a week, and for us, it takes 10, 15 minutes. And for a three and four-year-old, that's probably all you need to be doing anyway as far as structured time, and then just let them play. So that's what we do for preschool. Now, kindergarten, we started off the year with My Father's World Kindergarten. Um, I have taught that two other times, and I have loved it. Um, my third child was having a little harder time putting the different, once we got into where you were starting to read and put the letter sounds with matching them up and blending the words, she was having a lot harder time with it. So I took a step back and since I was switching some of the other kids over to Master Books, I went ahead and switched her over to Master Books Simply K. Um, and it has worked really well for her. She's done very good with it. I think it was a great move on our part. So we're using Simply K for her for kindergarten. Um, we have ABC cards, little booklets. And so it has kind of the same, set up the same way as Stepping Stones. Um, very gentle approach, very short. You only do uh, lessons three days a week, but with her we do them every day because she wants to. Um, not forcing her to do it, but she wants to, so uh, we do a little bit more. But here's a lesson, like lesson two is a week, week's worth of lesson. There's three days, but um, you have, let's see, okay. So you have like a life skill that you're working on, and then you have a Bible lesson, and then you have a rhyme. So we, this was Baba Black Sheep this week. And then um, you have a picture here of a bicycle and we were like working on the letter B. And then we were also working on seasons here. So she had to match the seasons with the symbol. And um, then you get into your ABCs and more. This is where you work on your letters. You work on print. And um, then you read your mini book. And she loves doing that by herself. But I'll show you what one of the mini books looks like. Everything comes with um, and the book that you get, I obviously have taken the book apart um, to put it in this binder. It was just easier for us to lay out, but this is one of the booklets. It just has like the letter K and then it has some uh, pictures and words at the bottom. So she goes K, -k, -k and then K -k -k kangaroo, K -k -k kettle, 
and uh, so on and so forth. And on the end, it's got um, how to write out the letter. So I have her trace it with her finger and she has loved it. So, and again, it's short. This maybe takes her 15, 20 minutes um, and she's done. So that is everything. I will link everything down below that I've talked about today. So if you wanted to check it out, you can. Um, this is the first video of several videos as I get ready to talk about our curriculum that we're gonna use for next year. Um, I'm gonna, the next one will be a curriculum unboxing because I have already started purchasing curriculum for uh, the 2021-2022 school year. So stay tuned for those and um, also stay tuned for some life updates as we get moving and get our farm in order and all that stuff is coming soon. So guys, as always, I'm so glad that you have joined me here. I am so grateful that you continue to show up each and every week as we put out videos and um, give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already and subscribe and we will see you in another video very soon. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.